Shock is an important topic to understand in the context of the cardiovascular section of the Step 1 exam. Shock occurs when tissues are not adequately perfused. It presents with hypotension, causing end organ dysfunction. Perfusion of blood to the tissues, like the stroke volume, depends on three things. The preload to the heart, the contractility of the heart, and the afterload of the heart. So starting with preload, if you have a preload problem, it means that you're not getting enough blood to the heart. So uh, in any one of these three problems, you first have to look at the initial insult. So in a preload problem, the initial insult is the decrease in the central venous pressure because you're not getting enough uh, you're not getting enough blood back to the heart. If you're not getting enough blood back to, blood back to the heart, what's the second thing that's going to happen? Well, the blood doesn't have any blood to work with, so the cardiac output is going to decrease. Any time that something happens uh, physiologically, the body is going to try to respond. So the uh, body tries to respond to dropping blood pressure because the cardiac output is decreased by increasing the systemic vascular resistance. And it does this by two ways. Uh, there's the baroreceptor reflex, which is the short-term control of blood via increasing the heart rate, increasing the uh, conduction velocity of the atrioventricular node, uh, and uh, pumping up the ionotropic effect to increase the stroke volume. Uh, and also, long-term, it does this via their run-in angiotestinal aldosterone system, uh, which is also important, but this is more of a long-term solution. So, uh, now that we've categorized this as a preload problem, how do we classify this? So this is what we talk about as the hypovolemic type of shock. So, judging by the name, I mean, what, what are the causes of this? It's a loss of volume. Uh, and it, this can occur via two mechanisms. So, either due to hemorrhage or due to dehydration. So, because you're losing blood and you're not, uh, you're, 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 you're losing it not into the tissues, but you're losing it y y to the outside of the body, uh, the skin is going to be cold and clammy. Uh, and the treatment for this is simple. You just give IV fluids to replace the fluid that has been lost. Okay, so now that we've talked about the preload, uh, now we move on to contractility. So if you have a contractility problem, the heart just isn't pumping blood out like it's supposed to. So the initial insult is a decrease in cardiac output. Uh, because the cardiac output is decreased, uh, blood is being backed up into the system, increasing the central venous pressure. Uh, the body tries to compensate for this uh, because the cardiac output is decreased, so the blood pressure drops. Uh, so the, the body tries to increase the systemic vascular resistance via the baroreceptor reflex and the renin angiotensin, angiotensin aldosterone system. So we classify this as cardiogenic and obstructive shock. Cardiogenic shock is due to an inherent problem of the heart beating. So this could be due to an MI or an arrhythmia. Uh, uh, and an obstructive cause is due to stress being put on the heart from structures outside of the heart, uh, which prevent the heart from beating as it should. So a pneumothorax would be, you know, air is in increasing the pressure in the thoracic cavity, and this pressure is pushing on the heart, causing it to beat less well than, it, than it's supposed to, and uh, same with cardiac tamponade, uh, but this time it's with blood uh, inside the pericardial space. Uh, so the skin findings, uh, similar to uh, hypovolemic shock, would be the patient would have cold and clammy skin. This is in contrast to afterload, which we're going to talk about next. And the treatment depends on the, uh, you know, on the source of the of the problem. So, if you have an arrhythmia or an MI, you, know, you can give ionotropic agents. Uh, and uh, in an obstructive cause, you would treat the underlying cause of the problem. Okay, so moving on to afterload. Uh, in an afterload problem, there's a massive drop in systemic vascular resistance. Uh, because the systemic vascular resistance drops and this is due to vasodilation, uh, not enough blood goes back to the heart. So, uh, as a secondary result, the central venous pressure drops. The heart tries to compensate for this by increasing the cardiac output. So, 
it's going to make the heart contract stronger and faster. Uh, this way the body tries to make up for the dropping blood pressure due to a resistance drop. So we categorize this type of shock as septic, anaphylactic, and neurogenic. Uh, septic shock is due to a systemic infection. So uh, briefly, in order to fight infection, uh, the body needs to send white blood cells to uh, where the pathogen is located. So the way this is done is the body uh, makes the vessels dilate by uh, signaling molecules such as prostaglandins, such as PGI2, and nitric oxide. Uh, what this does is this makes the blood vessels leaky, and blood will come out and fill the interstitium. Uh, thus, there's not enough blood left in the circulation, causing organs to be not adequately perfused. Anaphylactic shock has a similar outcome, but is uh, due to a different mechanism. So anaphylaxis think allergy, and allergy think IgE. So an antigen binds IgE, uh, IgE activates the IgE receptors on mast cells and basophils, which uh, degranulates them, releasing histamine, which in turn triggers vasodilation, much like we saw in septic shock. Uh, neurogenic shock is loss of sympathetic vascular tone. So when you lose the sympathetic vascular tone, systemic vascular resistance drops, and shock ensues. Uh, this is different from the types of shock we've seen before, because now, uh, instead of constricting vessels, the vessels are dilated, which is actually what causes this type of shock. So the skin findings are not going to be cold and clammy. The skin is actually going to be warm and dry. And that's because the leaky blood vessels let the blood come out into the interstitium, uh, and this is similar to when we feel inflammation, warmness, redness uh, during an infection. So, uh, mm, so think, uh, think blood coming out of vessels, and that that's why the skin feels warm. Uh, this is treated by replacing fluids and also administering vasopressors uh, such as aldosterone and angiotensin II. Alright, so in conclusion, you know, to think about all these different types of shocks, just figure out why they're occurring. There's three main mechanisms, and uh, if you know what the mechanism is and what the initial insult is, you can really just figure out uh, the rest pretty easily. Uh, okay, so best of luck with your studying.